So there are a lot of reasons to make electrical enclosures in order to protect a chip or a board or a box or whatever it may be, but every once in a while a box won't actually do it for you and you have to get a little bit more creative. You might want it to kind of blend in with its surroundings or look like something completely unrelated to what it actually is. So in this video we're going to talk about how to design an electrical enclosure that doesn't look like an electrical enclosure. So the first question becomes, why would you want not a box for an electrical enclosure? Boxes are fine, they're used all over the place. But the problem is, electrical components and pieces often have to be used in places where a box just looks ugly. Imagine those cell phone towers that look like palm trees. They're meant to blend in so they don't look like an ugly piece of technology in a certain part of the world. It might be an event, it might be the design of a building that just needs to be protected to where you don't want an ugly router sitting on the wall. So you wanna create an enclosure that just looks better than what would normally be there. Something custom or something just outright invisible. Now this is what we've done with this one. This is actually an alien mushroom, which has a slot in the top for the board itself. This allows us to create an electrical enclosure that doesn't look like it at all. So this could be a signal repeater or anything else along those lines, and it could be placed in like a theme park or in an event where you have this sort of thing. You could place these around something like Comic-Con and people would never know that they're Wi-Fi routers if you really needed that aesthetic. But there's other places where this is really important as well. Sometimes you want to place in human-made elements that just blend in with the rest of the surrounding. We've demoed this before when we made a birdhouse that looked like a tree stump. There's a lot of reasons for this type of camouflage to create an organic shape rather than just a black box that's just stapled to a wall. So how do you actually go about doing this? A lot of times you don't want to design the enclosure slot with the actual organic exterior. That can create a lot of additional labor. Generally you want to design the two separately and then combine them later on. The best way we found of ever doing this is through a Boolean operation, where you basically take the enclosure area that you would want the chip to be sitting into and create a negative of it. The inverse of exactly whatever you want. You include all the standoffs, any sort of mounting holes that you might need, anything that needs to be included in the actual enclosure you make a negative of. Then what you do is you take the basic shape that you want to insert that chip into and you can take that form which in our case had a big old large plane in order to split it in half, four mounting holes and then four standoffs inside of it. And then of course we did good practices around filleting the edges and all the rest of it. But once we had that negative, we're able to add it to all kinds of different shapes. In this case, we placed it right in the dome of the mushroom so that when we subtract it, we get this nice little slot that also splits it into the two separate halves with the lid top bottom, the four mounting holes and the four standoffs so that when we have the chip, we can go ahead and set it right in there. This creates a really easy way to create many different variations. So if we wanted to make a dozen different versions of these mushrooms, we could totally do it because we have that negative that is set to this chip. Now, the benefit with this is that we can now produce this with mass production 3D printing. Since this is an organic shape, it's very affordable to produce because there's not like super high tolerances or even cosmetic requirements because you have texturing and all kinds of other things. And then this would eventually probably be painted. So it is really amenable to the 3D printing process. So you can produce a thousand of these or 10,000 of these and not have to deal with all the costs of molding. Plus a design like this, where you have a small interior slot and really thick outer walls in order to create this shape, is very often either very difficult, very expensive, or just outright impossible to produce because traditional manufacturing isn't designed to make these type of bulky parts while still having internal componentry. So it's a really good use of 3D printing because it gives you a lot of advantages while still allowing scale, affordability, and the flexibility that you need to create an enclosure that doesn't look like an enclosure. Have a great day, everybody.